Hello. I think we should be live now. Let's check this out. That's right. Let's I see if I'm sounding okay. Uh, the testing. One, two, three. One, two, three. Testing, testing, testing. Let's check this out. That's right. Let's I see if I'm sounding okay. Now. Uh, the testing, one, two, three, one, two, three, testing, testing, testing. Yeah, sounds good. How are you guys doing? Welcome to another stream. It's been some time, actually. Uh, I know there's probably no one watching this, but it has been some time. I was quite busy in the past uh, week or so because I'm actually preparing to travel for, not for work, but to visit my family soon. So I've been doing a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good to, to see you guys again. Hi, Slim. <laughs> uh, hello, welcome to the stream, dude. Finally. Yeah, it's... I was going to do it last week, but I ended up being really, really busy. I've not been able to do any streams or any videos, so... Um, yeah, just had to do some shopping. Prepare for my, my travels, which is next week, and... Yeah, he's still ill. Dude, yeah, I mean... It's been uh, over a week, isn't it? Over a week, man. You need to probably go to the doctor or something if you're still feeling shit. Because, you know, COVID just doesn't just last for a week. <laughs> you get it checked, man. Yeah, so let's let's actually begin by um, installing this whole thing, I guess, right? So for the people watching this in the future, I'll be trying to write some C++ or, in fact, compile a, a project that actually Slim, the person who's here with us, has suggested before. And I think, I believe this is just a, an EM GUI kind of project, isn't there? So it... We have kind of VC package, and VC package is pulling the um, uh, IAM GUI library, and that's been compiled to WebAssembly. So that's what we want to do. Uh, so first of all, uh, we need to actually start by installing the framework mscripting, which I believe is an SDK that contains compilers uh, that will convert code from C++ to WebAssembly. So let's do that. Uh, let's just read it through this and see what we can do. Installation instructions using the EM SDK. I already see you're doing good. Hey, dude. Hey, Peter. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the stream, man. It's been over a week. So, yeah. Happy to see you guys again. Uh, so, first check the platform specific nodes below. Okay. That's Windows. Install Python 3 or newer. Uh, okay. We've got our Linux. EM SDK does not install any tools to the system. Otherwise, uh, Python is not provided by EM SDK. The user expect is expect expected. To install this beforehand with the system package manager. Okay, yeah, cool. We can. We're gonna do it in WSL, not Windows. So we're not gonna do. Not gonna follow the Windows stuff. Let's begin by installing the tools that are necessary here. Uh, I can see here we need Python three and CMake. We've already got both of these on our WSL. Sudo apt install git. We already already have that as well. Okay, so is it just a matter of downloading the GitHub page and then kind of building it? Uh, I'm going to try and keep up with the chat as well because I'm going to try and do this very quickly. So Peter said, yeah, over a week. Happy to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you again. You keep making videos, coding and stuff. I don't know how you find inspiration. Uh, <laughs> not so boring. Welcome to the stream again, guys. Um, I did some stuff. I exhausted all my ideas, just a few. But you keep doing stuff, dude. The, um, not so boring. Like if 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 you keep up with the channel, man, you can see the. I... So last week, for example, I had no time and no ideas. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, the important thing is just to you know keep up to date with the tech and. The sound is broken, by the way. It's crackling. Let me let me see if I can do anything. Um, now. Maybe it's a filter or something. Crackling sound, yeah. Oh, that does not sound good. Sorry about that, guys. Let's see if I can. 
kill myself here. Sounds alright now. It's better now. Okay. Yeah, maybe I just moved my microphone, maybe it was the wire or something. But do let me know if the sound is shit. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you. Thank you for helping out. Um as I was saying, yeah, I do also go through periods where I have no ideas. Uh, in fact, I really struggle to find video ideas. Um, hence why I don't post every week. Otherwise, I'll have videos every day. But, you know, so is life, isn't it? The visualizer finished. The visualizer is not finished yet, man. Uh, but I do need to go back to it because I've not done anything in like maybe two weeks on that. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember I was stuck on trying to render some meshes in Qt, uh, but then I, I fixed that and then I kind of stopped, didn't do anything else. So I need to actually get back to the audio part of it, like rendering stuff. But yeah, I mean, I'll, hopefully this week we'll have some more of that as well, maybe tomorrow or the day after. So this is the SDK. Uh, what do we have here? So yeah, my SDK, what does it do? Right, right. So this is... I don't have to compile anything. This is cool. This is really cool. So yeah, Ms. SDK install latest. Right, let's just try that. I love when, you know, it's it, it's very easy to install the tools. So for example, it's installing Node for me as well, which is cool. And I guess all the uh, the compilers that's going to need here. Let's, let's see if we can figure out what it's doing. Download me a bunch of binaries, I guess. Um, so make the latest SDK active for the current user, right? EM scripting file. So there is, okay. We can take a look at that as well. See what kind of configurations we have. Uh, activate path and other environment variables in the current terminal. Yeah, we can do that too. So let's do these things in order. So it seems like, it seems like the SDK has installed things. Now, if we activate the latest, resolve an alias. Okay. And then it, we source EMSDK and okay. Not so boring. Man, this stuff you do, I don't want to sound rude and stuff, but it doesn't seem practical. Maybe that's why I'm lost for ideas for projects, but I got a new one lately, a solar power that. Yeah, um, so yeah, I mean, you're, you're quite right. Most of the stuff that I do is not very practical. Um, I mean, it depends on how you view things, really. I mean, um, this, this thing for here, for example, um, M scripting and WebAssembly. Yeah, I mean, not not many companies are using this kind of stuff now. It's, I'm just doing it to learn and to see what it does, really. To to basically be able to write some C++ that will run on the one on a web browser. Uh, but yeah, I mean, finding practical <laughs> projects is is very difficult. I'm not gonna lie. I, I look for problems to solve before wanting to code. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're quite right. Uh, I do that sometimes at home as well. I mean, most of the stuff I do isn't isn't on video. Uh, and I do enjoy coding more when it's not on video, to be honest with you, than when I'm streaming. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, mo most of the practical stuff I do, I do a lot of stuff with Raspberry Pis and stuff. Uh, I've got like a, quite a f quite a few electronic devices here that I tend to code on, but um, yeah, it's not so many ideas for me. Uh, have you tried Google? Like, <laughs> not not the sound rude, but like just you know, cool projects, like cool projects. Uh, with a Raspberry Pi on or Arduino or whatever, like C++, and then kind of see if you can like replicate some of these because it might help you. Um, this is how I usually find things to do as well when I'm bored, when I have nothing to do. Um, so recently, for example, I actually had, I actually bought this, this um, like LCD screen for a Raspberry Pi, and I'm trying to code um, a Pico, Raspberry Pi Pico, Kind of like project to actually control it uh so that's that's what i was doing this weekend but you know you, you find some you know some cool stuff anyway um so like you learn a lot like for, for this project for example i was kind of learning how to use um like the spy protocol as well as how the lcd uh, screen works and like what kind of data it takes in and etc and so on and so forth so you know you kind of do learn a lot from sort of like just copying projects out there it's not a bad thing to do uh, yeah, make a drone, make a robot, cheaper to buy. Yeah, yeah, man. But just you know, it sounds to me like you're you're practicing anyway. So like, you, as long as you're learning something, that's that's the important thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there are times 
where things become boring. I'm not gonna lie, even to me. <laughs> Uh, so we've got the SDK up now. I'm going to try and focus on this. Does it... I, I can see that this project here kind of has some... Wait, do I... First of all, do I have VC package? I don't have VC package. Let me install that. Because we're going to need VC package. Oh, a constant reminder that my website... Uh, Blog posts are going down every month. I love that. Whenever I Google for something that I've written before. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, let's install VC package here. Uh, while we're waiting as well, another cool thing that you can do, or just uh, to help you out find ideas, is um, there is the GitHub. Uh, kind of project search here. I think if you go on just GitHub or whatever, github.com, uh, you can click on explore, I believe. Is that right? Explore. There you go. Uh, so you might find a really cool kind of like project that you can you can work on. Like trending is, is the one I tend to look at a lot. And you can have filters for like languages and stuff. So if you're looking for a C++ project, um, you know, just go on trending and see what's trending out there. There may be something you, you can help with. Um, I eventually, I, sometimes I do this. So for example, I found the the uh, Diablo reverse engineering project here, and I actually did contribute to it. Like, a, I think it was last year. I was like contributing to it for like a month or so, and it was, you know, good things you can do, really. I'm thinking about a solar diverter with Arduino, maybe something I could sell. They go for many hundreds of yeah, I mean if you can if you can make something practical um and sell it, dude, that's even better. You actually get money out of it. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so we've compiled we've got a VC package here, now we just have to ooh, run the bootstrap. Uh let's bootstrap our shell. Could not find zip. Please install it. Um uh, see that. Okay. Didn't know we didn't have that. Okay. Okay, we've got bootstrapped VC package now. I think there was something else we have to run as well, right? Let's see here. Cool. I mean, I do want to kind of just put the VC package root. Okay. Do I have VC package here? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to put the VC package root on my um, Z shell profile. Z shell I see actually. Oh. There you go. Then I can resource that. Uh, that show. I see. And now we should have the kind of VC package root here. Cool. We do. Um, reason f for that is because I'm probably gonna have to use it down here, right? In my CMake somewhere. I am guessing this person has it. There you go. Set VC package root tends to be the way people um, include VC package. Okay, now I think we're ready to actually compile this. So let's try that. So just to summarize, we have installed mscripting, we have installed VC package, uh, and now we're gonna sort of like just, just clone this repository, which has the, um, the code to actually be compiled into WebAssembly. And if you're wondering, I believe if I remember well, this is just a sort of like uh, IAM GUI, a quick application with SDL. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can, can run this on the browser, shall we? Hello, what do you think about C++ coal routines? Uh, Sop Pratch, I hope I pronounced that correctly, let me know. Um, I haven't actually used them yet, you know. I haven't actually gotten to use coal routines in C++ 20, <laughs> because I wasn't really aware that it was implemented yet. Um, 
because I believe some of the compilers weren't implementing it just yet, uh, maybe on 23 or so. But I ha yeah, I, I don't really have an opinion on them because I haven't really got to use it yet. But I do hope that they've kind of made it as easy as other languages, like um, like Go routines, for example. They're not really called routines, but if they made it as easy as, as, as Go and Rust to use sort of like asynchronous code and stuff, I, yeah, I, I, I just hope uh, that it's good, really. <laughs> but maybe, you know, we'll, we'll work on those in a future uh, tutorial or a future video here on the channel. Um, now that we have modules, we can do a, the C++ 20 and 23 series, which will be quite interesting. You know, coroutines, modules, uh, like sort of trades, not trades, but I guess the uh, concepts, right? That's the equivalent in C++. They are not easy. Oh, <laughs> never mind then. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it anyway. Uh, what did you think of it? It doesn't sound like you liked it, though. It sounds like you had a bad time with it. <laughs> Right, right, where, 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 where was I? Where was I? Yeah. Let's git clone this repo. Git clone. You need to implement two thirds classes and many functions to make these keywords work. Yeah, that's not ideal, you see. That's not ideal at all. Especially when you compare it to the kind of like modern um, alternatives. Not alternatives, really, because, you know, Go isn't really an alternative C++, but like you just put Go and then the function name in front of it, and then we'll run it as a core routine. Uh, kind of very similar for Rust as well. You have asynchronous, you just put async in front of your kind of like function. Uh, again, Rust async functions aren't core routines, but you know, you can you can kind of make it a core routine really. Uh, it's basically Matt's trying to say, I can't read this. Be curious for everything. Yeah, indeed, indeed slim. You got my words correctly. Or you can just use library like CPP Coro. Yeah, I mean, there are libraries that will probably do this. That's one of the things I've kind of um, think about C++ now. Like a lot of the standard stuff is cool. Like modules, for example, ranges, for example. They are really, really interesting. But then it takes forever for them to implement it in all the compilers. Uh, with exception of Microsoft, they tend to implement those things quite um, quite fast on the MSVC compiler. But then you get a bunch of third party libraries that do it better because the standard just, you know, all the, the compiler vendors or the standard itself took ages to finalize something. Such as, you know, Ranges v3. Ranges v3 is an amazing library and implements ranges the way that C++, you know, should be doing. In fact, I think it, it, it I'll be surprised if it's not just a fork, uh, you know, that the, the GCC and Clang haven't just forked that project <laughs> for the implementation. But yeah, I mean, you find way more useful stuff outside the, the standard itself than in the standard. So they need to improve that. So they need to improve that. The language is going to die in the future, unfortunately. I hope that doesn't become the case, though, because I do. C++ is still in my heart as my favorite language, but yeah. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here, I think is uh, we've got the, the repo cloned, and we're going to install the VC package dependencies here. Uh, right, or maybe not. Make the build, cd build, in game script. Wait, what? Ah, the MC make. Okay, so the SDK for M script has a CMake on it, which I I believe it probably sets like a few environment variables and like the uh, C++ compiler variables and shit. So it knows that you're not using the, um, the system uh, compiler, which in my case is GCC. When I talk too much and I forget to drink water. Don't do that, guys. Don't do that. Make sure you drink your water. Um, right, right, right. Cool. So we can just run this, right, I guess. Let's see what we have to change here. So run. Let's see, make. We're going to do the same thing here. Is this all the freaking... Oh, we don't need that, do we? Or maybe we do. I was also going to send the build to the build directory. EMS SDK is already, already defined. So, okay, we've got 
Ah, okay, so we're also passing the VC package triplet here, so we know that we're going to be cross compiling the dependencies. That's cool. That's good. Okay. Yeah, let's try this. This should work for us. We've got everything defined already. Triplet fly. C++ build systems are a pain. Yeah, they are. I do agree with that, um, uh, SOP. Because, yeah, if you're learning C++, if you compare it to any other language, like, say, you know, Python, for example. Python, you just you just learn the language and you can write programs for it, right? It has a build system already in it. It's not really a build system because you don't really build it, it's interpreted. But you take a look at Rust. Rust has Kygo. Take a look at Go. Go has, you know, the Go build system. Um, C++, you have to either learn Make, you have to either learn CMake, Mason builds, or whatever, like Visual Studio <laughs> builds, I guess. So yeah, I mean, there are more technologies you have to to actually learn if you want to be a full-on C++ developer. But on the other hand, uh, you do learn about build systems, though. You understand what each language is kind of doing on the background, uh, which is also very interesting. I mean, if you become a more advanced programmer, you're going to have to have that knowledge anyway. Um, C++ just kind of speeds that up. Uh, Nuria NT. I, I have no idea what the spam comment says anyway. The shortest CMake command. <laughs> yeah, the shortest CMake command. Oh, you have no idea, man. You should see the ones in my build um, files. But yeah, I mean, we're cross compiling everything now. Uh, VC package seems to be um, cross compiling everything to WebAssembly from the looks of it. It did take, oh no, it's, uh, yeah, I'm not sure now because I, I can't really see Wasm anywhere here. So I'm not sure if it's, Doing the right stuff. Oh yeah, it is. It is cross compiling it correctly. I can see it here. Uh, so it, what I'm trying to say is that this will take some time. <laughs> it might take like a, a good five minutes or so. So we can we can chat. We can just chat. Um, any like news that you guys have seen that you want to mention? You want to talk about? Like from my side, one of the things that really kind of like annoyed me recently is the uh, the Terraform situation. Like HashiCorp decided to make it non, non-free basically, or they changed the license. So every company ever that's using Terraform is going to have to rewrite stuff or use a different uh, tool kind of thing. And that has affected my work, unfortunately. Well, they will affect my work eventually. But anyway, let's, let's not talk about that because that's not C++, I guess. Um, have you guys tried Mason builds? That's one of the things I, I keep sort of putting off. Um, Mason builds, it's like a, I guess a different C++, right? But that's one of the things I've ever tried, and it just looks very complicated to me. <laughs> it's like a full-on programming language for a build system. It's supposed to be better than C++. Uh, sorry, than, than CMake because it's very declarative, I guess. Um, but yeah, dude, I'm going to have to ban this person here. What does this even mean? You aren't asking me though, are you? I'm asking you guys, yeah, Peter. I'm asking everyone here. While, you know, while you wait for the build, while we watch the build together, we can, we can just chat. Dude, here, here's Brotley again. I have no idea what Brotley is, but it pops up as a dependency. Every time, in every single like thing that I build, Qt, what, what was it again? SDL has it, hence why it's here. Oh, it's a compression format. Okay, it's a compression format, that's why. Probably it's a generic purpose lossless compression algorithm that compresses data using a combination of modern variant of the LZ77 algorithm, yeah. Hoffman coding, ah, cool, fairly, fairly standard. Cool, that, that's why it pops up everywhere, because it's just a compression algorithm. Nice. I, I have no idea. Kelv, welcome to the welcome to the stream, dude. Welcome to the stream. Ma, are you going to try coroutines tonight? Um, guess what? Maybe. Maybe if I have time, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be streaming for another hour in a bit. So let's see. If we can get this to compile, we can try and add some coroutines to it. <laughs> so just a very, very easy function that will be running as a coroutine. Um, these songs definitely sound like they are not DCMA free. And I hope that I don't get striped. I don't know what the past tense for strike is. Stroke. Um, no, that sounds like something else, actually. Never mind. Um, 
how often do you stream, by the way? Uh, so I tend to stream every week. <laughs> now, the number of times I stream isn't, like, defined. Uh, I sometimes stream once. I sometimes, I sometimes stream three times a week. Uh, but that's that's the idea. I mean, you stream at least once a week and then maybe uh, upload a video as well about something. So last week I was busy, so I didn't stream and I didn't really post anything either. But yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the plan. And I will be very busy next week as well, although I should prepare some videos in advance. And maybe I'll be able to stream for like an hour, but it will be a different time because I'll be in Brazil. I'll be visiting family in Sao Paulo, so I'll be maybe streaming a little bit later than usual. But I will try to leave, um, you know, videos edited so I can just post once a week or something. So the algorithm doesn't punish me too much for not being active because YouTube is a pain, actually. But anyway, uh, we have something. We have something running. Uh, so build. Okay. Okay, so we have to actually run make, I guess. Wait, what did that do? I'm just gonna run this again. Uh, the source directory development does not appear to continuously make lists. Oh yeah, that's correct. That's because I copied and pasted the. It should have been this one. So it's a normal build, M scripting build. Sub Pratch. Um, sometimes cargo cargo is sometimes funny. Um, for some reason, my chat is there. You go. Sometimes funny. Debug build two seconds. Release build two seconds. Empty plus plus. I don't see much time difference. Yeah, uh, I don't know. In my opinion. Sort of like cargo seems kind of like slower compared to CMake, especially for bigger projects when you kind of work in, in bigger projects. But at the same time, yeah, I don't know if I can notice a difference actually. There, there might be like some difference between C++ build times and and Rust. It just feels like Rust is slower to me. It just feels like it, but I, I can't really say because I don't know the data. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Antonio, hello Antonio. Bem-vindo, bem-vindo. We've got the whole crew today here. We've got like a... There you go, Antonio and Slim. Tibia friends. Very potential. Uh, I can't... I kind of want to see if... Uh, there is actually an article somewhere with actual data about it, because I'm, I'm interested now. So there you go, C++ versus Rust speed times. In Rust, 45 seconds of a reverse complement implementation. Sorry, uh, 0.45 seconds. Actually, C++ looks a lot slower from the looks of him. Binary trees, faster, I don't know what fast A is, but okay. End body, oh yeah, I guess it depends, right? But this is, again, this is going to be data for very small sort of algorithms or implementations. I want to know, like, from a company, maybe a blog post, uh, where they've compared their previous C++ builds to Rust uh, build speeds. Say something like, you know, Google or something like that. Maybe they, they'll release a, a blog post at some point. Amazon tends to release a lot of blog posts about this kind of stuff as well. Um, so, yeah, I'll be interested to know, like, in, in big projects, what, what the difference is in build times. Because to me, it does feel like Rust is very, very slow, especially when you change one of, one of the dependencies and it has to rebuild everything. Yeah, but anyway. Uh, okay, okay, so... Going back to M scripting, M scripting. So the OpenGL SDK is, high, is highly platform dependent and is usually an OS component. It's not realistically to build from source for every platform. Okay, cool, we know that. Um, so what's in build? Uh, if we make it. Okay. Ah, uh, we've got Wasm here. Cool. Now, how do I run this? Let's go back to our, our project. 
npx. Now this is npm, so do you guys, if you guys know JavaScript, um, do I just run it from the build directory here? Do I just build it? Uh, or do I run it from here? I just run it from the build directory, okay, so not, not the, okay, npx. HTTP server. Okay, to proceed, I guess so, why not? And here is node, download the other dependencies and everything else. Now, what am I actually gonna get if I paste it here? Now, before I pull my files over for the internet, let's run it on the other. Oh, okay, okay, cool. So it, it, is, it did just start a freaking HTTP file server, cool. What are you building with Wasm? Hey, Dana J. I have not not heard that name in weeks, dude. How are you doing, man? Welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm just compiling a, a an EM GUI slash SDL project <laughs> to a Wasm. Uh, Slim is the person who actually kind of told us to to try this, so we're we're doing it. Open the HTML now. Yeah, cool. HTML. This one here. Oh, this is so cool, man. This is running on the this is running on the browser, that's amazing. This is really cool, really, really cool. That's amazing. Should show you Wasm, just try Wasm yourself. Just write Wasm yourself. Um, yeah, I'm not that interested in, in assembly, unfortunately, otherwise <laughs> I would learn it. I think the only assembly that I did back in the day was um, what was it? 68k. If you guys ever ever saw that one, 65k and 68k. Those are the two assembly two assemblies I've actually learned at uni. When I say back in the day, I mean like literally seven, eight years ago when I was at university. It was one of the the modules was to create a little game for the 65k. I think it's in the README. Let's look at the difference. Okay. What's in the readme? What what am I looking for here? How can multiply the BXBase name description? The normal build. Okay, cool. Um Yeah, I I run the normal build, not the M scripting build. Uh does Wasm compilation need lots of configurations to work? Uh, so SOP Pratch, I just did it all in like 20 minutes. So no, it, it doesn't. <laughs> I didn't configure any single thing. I just pulled, just installed M scripting, VC package, and then I kind of compiled this project that someone else wrote. So by the way, kudos to this guy. Um, he made it quite easy to install it. The normal build versus M scripting looks at the difference. Okay. Uh, I will try the note the M scripting build now, if that's why you you're asking. Wait, wh yeah, what is the difference? EMC make and make. Yeah, clone M scripting make. Ah, okay, no, this this is just compiling for my machine. I don't, I'm not really interested in doing this. Uh, I can do it. It's just compiling with my compilers, I guess. Yeah, yeah, this one is native. Yeah. I, I I know I can compile this natively for, for my WSL. One is for, yeah, indeed, yeah. Yeah, mscripting has its own compiler, cool. Yeah, so mscripting, if you're interested, um, it seems to be like an SDK full of like WASM compilers and tools to, to write WebAssembly. So, you know, very interesting anyway. Dana J, does it convert GUI elements to Canvas elements? And it, uh, my I don't know. I don't actually know. Uh, let's take a look. My guess is that it has some sort of canvas in it, and the you know the GUI elements are actually running on the canvas, com uh, controlled by WebAssembly. Uh, but we'll see that. We can open the HTML file and look at it. Let's see it. Oh. 
we could have also just looked at the get repo, I guess. Uh, okay, so build. This is the WebAssembly, right? Yeah, this is, no, this is the actual JavaScript. This is the WebAssembly. Wait, wait, can I, can I get a WASM extension here? Okay, let's try this. Uh, let's try open the wasm yeah. Open anyway, I guess. It's just gonna be binary. That's the yeah. There you go. Not not able to display it. I was wondering if I could kind of just show this stuff in a human readable format, but I guess opening developer tool might give it a better idea. Increase the dynamic JS is handling. Yeah, it should be right. So if we do. What is it? How do I get developer tools on Microsoft Edge here? There you go. Yeah, this is this is the canvas and the canvas being controlled by I guess the uh, the web assembly, right? And JavaScript, I guess. Why do you want to read binary? I don't want to read binary. I was just wondering if I can show the WebAssembly as it is. But obviously it's already been compiled to binary, so I can't do that. Because you can read assembly. I just wanted to see if it, it looks like assembly. Because <laughs> I've, ne I've never done WebAssembly before. So I just kind of wonder how much it differs from like x86 or something a bit simpler. This is really cool though. How do I see um, how much kind of rendering has been done by JavaScript? Do you, do you guys know? I think Slim, you're probably, you're probably the person to, to do this because you, you're you actually a, a JavaScript dev, right? I have no idea what I'm looking at here. Performance maybe? How many can we Give a better idea in case, right? No, I'm missing something. Yeah, I don't know. P past this, I don't know how kind of like how to see how much rendering has been done by JavaScript. But what I can tell is that this feels very responsive, though. It doesn't feel like it's slow or anything. And this is freaking EM GUI. EM GUI running on the web. This is amazing. So in theory, in theory, I should be able to compile something like Diablo for this because. If you guys look at the actual Revolution X Revolution project, which is the reverse engineering uh, project for Diablo. So this is a C++ project, right? And it has VC package um, on it. So this is what downloads the uh, all the dependencies here, SDL, whatnot. And it's all C++. So question is, <laughs> can I kind of compile this or try to compile this to WebAssembly? Because that would be really interesting. This is like Wasm look like if you write maybe profiler. Yeah, I tried profiler then, Ajay. Sorry. I'm, this is what Wasm look like if you write it in the WebAssembly Web assembly language itself. Yeah. Uh, I think it, maybe you sent something that was cut off by YouTube, Kelv, I don't know. Because YouTube does not show links, by the way. So if you're sending links, too bad. Should we try that? Wait, I never knew Diablo source code was available. Uh, yeah, so this is the reverse engineering um, project. It's all in, It was reverse engineered in C, but in C++ as well. So if you do own Diablo, um, you can play it, you can compile it in C++. In fact, I'll do it right now so you guys can see it. Um, I remember contributing to this like over a year ago. I pushed a few lines, so I'm still in the contributor list, hopefully. But yeah. Uh, this is probably going to have to be done on Windows because it will need audio. 
Yeah, this is not going to work yet. So let's, let's do it on Windows, actually. Oh, no, but then... No, yeah. Let's try on, on Linux, anyway. Reason being is because I want to try compiling this for, for WebAssembly. <laughs> oh. My typing is not too good today. Yeah, Wasm is really restricted. Very cool. For example, on Rear Engine removed web support around five years ago because Wasm is kind of the problem. Okay, I didn't know that. Oh, but this is entirely SDL. That's that's why I came up with this idea because I know that this project uses SDL too. Uh, and nothing more difficult than that. So yeah. Um, So there is a how to install. No, this is a CMake project, so we should be able to just kind of run the same same CMake thing. What is it? EM CMake. Let's try that. Hmm. EMC. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just need to source the environment first, I guess. Okay, cool. Now, this is uh, this is going to fail. This is not going to work straight away. I guarantee you that. But I want to see how far it gets. <laughs> yeah, someone tried Doom and Wasm. I mean, yeah, that should be easy. Dooming Wasm should be the easiest thing ever. Like the amount of platforms that people already ported Doom to, porting it to Wasm is, isn't going to be difficult at all. Plus it's C++, right? So you should, they should just be able to compile it. Uh, Wasm multi-threaded isn't really good. Uh, yeah, I've, I've not tried multi-threaded Wasm yet. Um, luckily though, this is not, I don't think this is a multi-threaded um, project. Doom, the, uh, sorry, not Doom, um, Diablo. Antonio, probably a dumb question. What happens if I compile a program uh, with a syscall to Wasm? Does it make the syscall from the browser? Um, right, so let me explain this. So like the syscall only happens because you're compiling something with a compiler that will translate code to a syscall, right? In the case of Wasm, um, if you do something like some C++ code to open a file, for example, that will create a file handle, which eventually leads down to a syscall. I don't know what will happen, <laughs> but things like printing to the console or whatnot, which boils down to sort of like a, a write, um, a write syscall, will probably just be translated to the, the, the equivalent like console.log, wasm JavaScript kind of equivalent. I don't know, um, but it's not a dumb question. Uh, it, but the answer is it depends on what the compiler is going to do to the code, right? That the compiler is what what's translating your code to to the actual like binary or um, assembly. So it's only a syscall if your compiler is is creating that syscall. Oh, but, and yeah, we're going to find this out real soon, I guess, right? Because this this project does open files on the system. We will try and read uh, something called the Diab data. That's what you actually need to, to kind of run this whole project. So this is the actual like engine uh, compiled down. But to run the game, you need the game files, which is this diab.data file thing. No one understands how web dev works. Yeah, <laughs> no one understands how web dev works. Not even the people who do it. <laughs> I'm convinced that the only people who actually understand everything in web dev is probably the, the people who contribute to like VA engines or whatever other projects like that there are out there. <laughs> Cause everything else just works. I wonder how people work as front end developers. <laughs> I mean, I, I would love to, to know how to do front end development. Cause it's actually quite quite satisfying isn't it like you create a beautiful UI and everything just works perfectly 
and you can actually see something. Whereas like if you're doing back-end development, like like I do, you're just like putting some code together that's gonna hopefully gonna work when someone clicks a button somewhere. <laughs> so no one really sees the logic behind it. Dana J. Lamal, imagine using reboot syscall in Wasm. So every time someone opens your website, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure that there are sort of like guards against that. You can't you can't do that from JavaScript, right? Or Wasm, in fact. This is getting, you know, this is this is going this is going far. This is kind of working. I mean, we're still on the VC package stuff. Yeah, we're downloading Google Test now for Wasm. That's interesting. So we're compiling all these these sort of like third party libraries to uh, to Wasm here. Has someone not done this already? Because it kind of feels like this is something that someone will definitely have done before. So you can see all the all the releases here. So what all the platforms it supports. So 3DS, Amiga, Android, iOS, Linux, blah blah blah. No, there's no there's no Wasm build. Oh no, we, we do have 25, 26 assets. Mac OS, uh, PS4, the Vita. Yeah, cool, there's no Wasm here. I mean, I'm surprised that VC package actually compiled everything. What the hell? There's no way, right? There's, there's just no way. It did, it did compile, like, it, it worked. <laughs> Index.html, yeah, but that's not, that's not what we compiled though. Um, okay, so if we do a CMake build, because we run basically the configure stuff, right? So we have to actually build it. CMake build. Oh, this is this is where it's gonna f oh no 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 uh, this is where it's gonna fail. Um, see, make we're actually gonna run the build stage here. How long does it take to build normally? Um, the 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 Diablo project probably like two minutes I'll say <laughs> on my machine. That's how I remember it working about two to three minutes. Or two to five minutes, I'd say, depending depending on how much load you've got in your machine. What? It, it worked? No way. There's no way this worked. So what did they actually create here? So we found everything running. We see package install. I could not find get text. Build files have written to that. Yeah, so we have configured. Ah, okay. What is the issue here? An argument. Let's just remake. Yeah, compiling this project here on a normal machine is very, very quick. This is you gotta understand that this is a a game that's maybe older than all of you here, right? Uh, not as old as me. I think it's it's just as old as me. I'm 27. I think this came out in like 90, 96, I'd say. I don't don't really know. It's a very old game. 97, yeah. So it's a year younger than me. This is this is a 26 year old uh, project. So it is very small. <laughs> it's not it's not a massive project. Um, so it is very quick to compile. Very very quick. As you can see here, with 58% of the way already. And there you go. As expected, it doesn't really work. Um, doesn't really work, but let's see why it doesn't work. But that's definitely something we can try in the future, though. So trace back, blah, blah, blah. Generating poor. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, where is the actual error though? Error, so process 119 failed. EM cache is locked. Not in OS.environment F. Attempts to lock the cache while parent process is holding the lock reason. So that error attempts to lock a cache. Sys root lib wasm inscription lib png dot eight what? Okay. Let's try that again. <laughs> Let's see if we can kind of circumvent this. Uh, the most readable C error. <laughs> yeah, the most you. I, li I like your jokes, man. I really do like your jokes. I have no idea what this error is, but maybe someone someone else came across this before. Yeah, I guarantee you this is not the actual error. It's, it's something else, right? Attempting to cache. Apparently. Older than us. Yeah, this is older than you did. <laughs> I found that this only happens when I try to set the ports. GG, internet died. Oh no. Am I still online? Am I still... Hello, hello, hello? It's my internet shit. It seems to be working here. Ah, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I was just wondering if uh, if he was talking about my internet. Thank you guys, thank you for, for letting me know. Yeah, so we're getting some weird lock being held by the SDK somewhere. And someone suggests to uninstall the um, SDK and then use Chocolatey to install it. In my case, I don't have Chocolatey because it's on Linux. I don't want to reinstall it, so let's see if there's another way of doing it. I found that the only happens the, this only happens when I try this set the ports. I need set the ports, I need an SDK. Properties, compile flags. Description frozen caches prevents new libraries from being added to the cache in its way. I'm something a book. My problem came from a pseudo emscription. My solution is to uninstall emscription and install it using the recommended emscript installation guide. No, we're not. Okay. Bear with me for a second, let me try and see if I can let me let me see if I can try and fix this. We try to avoid using an external tools when building ports, since that would mean that any users of the port would need to. So we don't use make an ninja. Since many EM SDK users don't have any of these tools installed. Any reason why the free type is hard to maintain in its current form? It's C++, so we will work at work after 10 hours of fixing option. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that does summarize my, my work life quite nicely. I write something, it doesn't work, and I debug it for five hours until I fix it. Is it because I use make? So if I do m, yeah, c make. Oh, 
Oh, sorry. No. The EMC make doesn't work either. I just don't understand what this is. I wish I understood what this issue is. It's something to do with the PNG library, the PNG. Attempting to lock the cache while the parent process is holding the lock. Like, why? Why is this happening? I'm going to waste another two minutes on this, and if I can't fix it, we're going to move on to something else. <laughs> yeah, none of these, like, the, these two links, these two threads actually explain quite well uh, what I'm going through, but there's no solution on them. That's the only issue. <laughs> did you do EC make? Yeah, I did EC make. Uh, EC make seems to only work for configuring the project because it's passing some weird shit to it. Uh, EC make, C make, build. If you do that, um, MC make. There you go. If you do this, you can see that it's passing this uh, CMake toolchain file, and that's not a valid CMake build command. So this is just for configuring, I guess. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I did run the configuration before. Uh, it's just one building that doesn't work because of this lock issue that I've never seen in my life before. This is this is definitely a an EM plus plus issue with M script and compiler. It sounds like it's whenever you try to uh, recompile a library that mscripten doesn't support. So in my case, it's libpng from the looks of it. Um, and it just doesn't change the cache, right? It doesn't change its, its compiler cache. Yes, we're considering adding Ninja as a dependency, but we have not actually taken that step. And the other one, which was this one, doesn't actually have any, any fixes either. Oh no, this is just the same one, right? Yeah. Sorry, this is the this is the one I was talking about. Yeah, maybe we can do this one here. E M make. That also doesn't work. <laughs> I also installed it. Using the Ubuntu package manager. I guess Ubuntu is configuring mscripting with frozen cache. How do I configure this not to freeze the cache? Is there a way to do this? Disable this frozen cache thing. Oh, this guy's trying to build libc. That's amazing. I don't want to do. I don't want to do that. I just want to <laughs> build lib PNG. Um. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe we're not actually going to get anywhere with this, but, you know, it was a good try. Uh, basically, I just tried to compile the, the whole Diablo engine for, for WebAssembly, but as you can kind of guess, it didn't really work. I thought it wasn't going to work. I was just wondering, like, where it would fail. And it seems to fail with uh, just a, I guess, a random mscripten error, which I don't really understand. But maybe in the future we can try and make it work. Um, yeah. What can we do now? So, uh, 
I think someone suggested to try coroutines, right? So let's try that. I mean, I've not actually tried coroutines in C++. And let's see what we actually need to do that. Yeah, it was worth the try. It was worth the try. Um, let's see which compilers I need and whether or not I have an actual compiler that will allow me to use coroutines. You know, you just got to love the documentation page for CPP reference, don't you? Look at that. How readable is this? I don't even... I forgot what I'm looking for now. That's, that's how good it is. I am looking for the compiler features. CPP reference. Compiler support. That's what I'm looking. You know, when, when someone has to go to Google to search for something in your website, you're kind of doing the website wrong. That's kind of how I feel. So like, cbpreference.com should definitely do with a little like revamp, in my opinion. It's been the same for years and years. Uh, anyway, core routines. And what are we on here? So the three major compilers, we have GC, Clang, and Microsoft. Uh, where are we? You see Clang and Microsoft. So wait, what? Well, Clang doesn't actually support it. Interesting. Uh, so I need GCC 10. Do I have GCC 10? I do, I've got 11. So we should be able to use coroutines here, right? Now let's actually read how, to, how we can use this. So coroutine is a function that can suspend execution to be resumed later. Yeah, we know that. I just want to look at the usage. The call await expression. This is just like a awaitant in Rust or go or whatever. There's one good CVP call on about coroutines. I will definitely watch that. I don't feel like we've got enough time here. I just want to get some something quick and dirty working. Um, so let's actually create a direction for it. So CD, I'll see my make CP. Ooh, uh, make there, sorry. This is actually a good idea for a video as well. So, you know, you've you've given me a very good idea. So we can go here. Create a CMake lists. TXT. Now that I'm hoping you guys can see the screen, I can probably increase the. There you go. Maybe a little bit better for you now. So let's do a CMake minimum required uh, version 3.25. Which version do I have? Oh, 3.27. Even better. Why did code close? Why did code close? A buggy as hell software. Oh, of course, because it wants to update itself. Close without asking me. Nice. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, I don't want to know what's new. Standard required, true or on. We need 20, right? Uh, so yeah, standard required, so exact extensions. We want to turn that off. Let's just add an executable here. Uh, the executable, let's call it call routines. And we're just going to put main.cpp here somewhere. Let's create that main file. Okay. Cool. Um, because I'm lazy, um, I'm actually going to co copy the uh, CMake settings from a different project. 
uh, such Pratch. I'm waiting for a video. A hundred reasons to not use C++ coroutines. <laughs> yeah, use Rust instead if you want to work with coroutines. That's my that's my um, my recommendation. Yeah, so where will we? So let's try and see if we can act, at least implement the header, all right? So the coroutine header. Uh, but first, let's copy that. The um, CMake JSON, CMake settings.json. Sorry, CMake presets.json. Jesus, there you go. The reason being is because I now have a whole build settings here for me. And I can simply select the correct one, which will be Unix builds. All right. right. Where's my CMake presets? Select as preset. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh, so we want sim Unix make debug. There you go. So we can... someone told me that C++ actually doesn't need them. Yeah, I mean, the way I see things is that like, if you're using C++, you're probably working on a low level project or something that controls some sort of hardware. And that code shouldn't be complicated, right? So maybe normal threads will do sometimes. As long as you can work with mutexes and and stuff, but yeah, no CMake list.txt was found. Yeah, you're quite right. It wasn't. Let's try that now. Okay, cool. So what is the issue here? Could not find Conan toolchain. Uh, okay, yeah, we don't want Conan. We don't want Conan. This is some leftover from the other project. I do apologize. Uh, we want Unix debug somewhere. There you go. We don't want to inherit Conan debug. Okay. Okay, so it did, it did configure now, so we are able to use C++20. Uh, now, question is, can we do include core routines? Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, we can indeed. Uh, cool, I have absolutely no, absolutely no idea how to actually use this. So I guess there is, yeah, as you can see that here, there is the concept of promises and futures, right? And question is, why is it not part of a, why is this not already in the, the language itself? We do have promises and futures already in C++, but I have to create another struct just for that. Struct coroutine, coroutine handle, promise. Using promise type there. Coroutine. I'm just trying to understand what this code is actually doing. So we are implementing some sort of like promise type here. Initial suspend, final suspend. Return void, unhandled exception. This is a lot of setup just to use a, a coroutine. Coroutine F. So you just put the code you want to run as a coroutine here. So coroutine up there. Bad one. So we do a coroutine. As I said, it needs many types and functions to work. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it does, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't understand why this isn't just a, a little standard library um, generic type. So you can do just promise of something and that'll be your promise. I'm just trying to understand what this actually does though. Uh, so coroutine, let's destroy. Resume coroutine executes. C out uses SI after free H destroy. What you need another 
on top of your promise structs, you need another struct that will actually hold the coroutine. See how it uses I after free. Like, what is the logic of this code? What, what is it actually even doing? So we're printing out I, whatever I is, which is zero. Then we also have a coroutine F here. And we call F straight away, which returns a coroutine. Um, that returns a coroutine, H. H resume. So S is destroyed here. And this is bad code because S is destroyed and you're still holding a reference to it inside coroutine S. Is that the, the point here? No, you don't. It's, it's just example with member function. Ah, okay, cool. But why is this example named bad? What's bad after this? What, what's bad about this? I think it's this here, right? This is, this is the bad bit. Ah, yeah, okay. So S, I is used after. It does say in the comment. I just didn't freaking read it. Yeah, that's why it's a bad example. Okay, I, I see I see the point now. So if you're trying to do something like this, you actually have to store s as a member variable. Uh, sorry, as a normal variable in here somewhere. s return coroutine can be resumed without committing. Okay, yeah, so in this case, we create the, the s struct and then you return the coroutine of it. But s was destroyed, so you can't really use anything after it. Okay, cool. You can make a global function with coroutines return type. Yeah, you, you can do that. Let's let's try this. Let's try this. I do actually need to read the entire documentation for this because I've not I don't actually know too much about the coroutine header, if I'm honest. So we've got all these types. Now the question is, can I do something like uh, auto s, auto hello, I guess. Oh. And I can do my s dot f. That's my coroutine. Auto coroutine. Now this is good code because S is still here as a reference. Uh, resume, I guess. Core return. What does resume do? So what does resume actually do? So F, for example, returns a coroutine. A coroutine is this coroutine handle. So let's see what resume does. Operator resumes the execution of the coroutine to which this refers to. Well, there's nothing if the coroutine is a no op coroutine. So it does nothing. This behavior is undefined if this does not refer to suspend to a suspended coroutine. So does co-return kind of suspend it? Well, let's try this out anyway. So, oh, I can just do this, right? This should also work. Okay, so this is, this is a hello world kind of thing. Let's see if we can compile this first of all. Co-return and end, end coroutine, okay. I just don't understand how, you know, because this is essentially calling dot resume. And in the documentation says the resume, resumes the coroutine that's suspended. Like we, we haven't suspended it here, have we? Co-await return value and suspend coroutine. Co-await return value and suspend coroutine. Okay, cool. So if you, if you return, hmm, Okay. Let me look at the example. Maybe I've missed something here. Yeah. So, where's the bad code again? 
There you go. So this this will call the coroutine and execute it. And I guess it, it stops a co-return. Coroutine bad. So the good example is a little bit different. So we have a coroutine H, which is a lambda that returns a coroutine, and we call it with zero straight away. Lambda is destroyed here. As you have no problem, I has been copied to the coroutine frame. Oh, okay, I see. Anyway, I mean, we, we did compile it. Can we run it? That's the question. It does run, but like, is this running in a good way or running in a bad way? Is it accessing memory that it shouldn't have? I mean, from what I understand here is this is fine. <laughs> how do I get a promise out of this then? So like, how do I actually get the value out of this? If I had to wait for, for something. So is it just about calling the coroutine like this? And that'll be my value? Can I co-return a value? Can I just co-return 10? Does it work like that? Has no member return value. Co-routine promise type has no member return value. Co-routine return type has no member return value. Promise type. Wait, so do I need some sort of like return value here? Let's see. Return value. I guess I have to change the promise thing, right? Code yield. Unique generator. Okay. The hazard of passing parameters to coroutines by reference. Yeah, I mean we've we've just seen that in the examples. Um but how do you actually say that your promise is a promise of integers? That's my question. Okay, we have co yield here. Uh, vector is not a readable type, so it can usefully be written. If you add some tracing, you can see the auto operations going wrong. This is a this is for my head right now. I'm not going to understand this this example, but let's try. So they have the promise struct here, and then the result. Okay, so you kind of create a future and then you get the promise out of the future. Okay, that's kind of what I expected. I was wondering why that example isn't using the future as a promise. But this is actually wrapping the C++ future into a struct instead of just providing something a bit easier. Do not worry, no one will understand. Yeah, this is just nonsense. This is just nonsense. Like, this is a lot different compared to the actual async functions. Like, async C++ is actually good, the async header. Like, if you want to create an asynchronous function, you just do an S to the async, and that's it, and you pass in a lambda to it. This, this is actually very good, like, good design. Um, you have features as well, and the same header. You can use those features to, to wait for return types. So, in a way, this is very good, very well designed. But this coroutine stuff, is just crazy. Like, why do you need all of this just to have a promise that will return a vector? Like, I don't understand that. Like, who thought that this is good? Like, who in the standard thought that this is good? Because it's not, it's just not. 
Like, what is the issue in adding another syntactic sugar keyword somewhere? <laughs> kind of like go. Like, this is this is go coverage. This is go routines, right? Look how easy it is compared to this. And you have channels as well. Like, this this is just crazy. Like, you do go and then the function, and it will create a coroutine. Kind of like a coroutine for that. Like, why, why couldn't C just do something similar, I guess? Have like an extra keyword in there somewhere. I guess it does break a lot of things, right? Adding <laughs> adding extra keywords to the language, but you know, not a bad idea. If I remember correctly, you don't need any STD future. Ah, well, that example kind of did if you want to return something like a, a vector. I don't know, maybe this is not the best example out there, but interesting though. Now, um, I'm going to call the stream here, guys. I'm, I'm going to go at 10. I'm going to get some sleep because <laughs> I am absolutely tired. But thank you all for joining this, though. It's been very fun to actually compile something with mscripten. Uh, I'm very impressed. I'm actually very, very impressed about the, uh, the, the kind of like I am GUI project that we got in the end. Um, yeah, like I was, I was very impressed that it actually worked. Like you can, you can compile SDL two, and I am GUI for for the web, and coroutines not so fun. <laughs> well, thank you for for suggesting a SOP. It's, uh, I mean, I will probably never ever touch this again because I just won't need it in C plus plus. But it's it's good to kind of see what's going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do need some ideas for tomorrow. So if you guys have any any ideas, let me know in the comments or anything like that. Otherwise, I'll just be doing like the uh, the audio. Uh, go back to Qt programming, I guess. Audio visualizer, why not? But yeah, thank you all very much, and have a nice evening. And I'll see you guys this week at some point again. Bye bye, ciao.